Are we filming? Yes, we are. Um, let me get a bit of uh, slightly warmer light in here. That's better. Um, so let's sort myself out. Sort yourself out now. Um, what pen are you going to use? Actually, I'm not going to use this one. My disposable fountain pen I'm testing at the moment. I'll just use my trusty Pilot G2 with the one millimeter broad nib. One of my favorites. Um, today I want to talk about this subject. Routines. This is something that may appeal to you or may not appeal. Uh, I will leave it with you. You are the final arbiter of that judgment. Uh, but I want to I want to go deep into one of the ways that I have for many years used a file effects. Um, as you know, I am not exclusively involved in file effects because also I use I use um, notebooks of various sizes uh, and I also use disc bound planners again of various sizes all the way from A7 all the way up to A5 um, but in this particular case a file effects or similar binder is perfect for me. And I'm talking about this thing called routines. Now, what I mean by a routine, well, let's write it down. And this is this is my interpretation. This this is purely a system that I have developed myself i don't know what i am imagining that other people do this in their own way but i um i can only speak for myself and uh if it's useful to you then great this might be a fairly long drawn out possibly possibly boring video i'm hoping that i can do it in one single take um i'm just coming out of uh, a period of feeling a bit under the weather uh, so if if I if it's slightly disjointed, it's because I've had to uh, cut out some coughs in the edit. But we will persevere. Um, so what is what is a routine? What is a routine? And and this is for me. What is a routine? Well, and I'm going to explain later why why this works for me. Um, a routine is a series of instructions uh, so that you can complete a task. Um, now, this could be very, very easy. It could be, for instance, uh, fill the kettle with water, plug it in. But that's not necessarily. I mean, it's a good example, but I, I want to I want to use that as a very very simple argument to to lend weight to my argument. Um, let's just supposing that you have completely forgotten how to boil a kettle. Um, what would you do? Um, you would refer to. A, a the routine called boil a kettle and you may not be familiar with every single procedure within at the link and the chain of events in order to to turn water out of the uh, out of the ground and and put and turn that cold water how to extract that water out of the pipe get it into the kettle use this kettle heating device to heat the water and then put it into a mug and then 
boil some coffee or make a tea or something. Um, and at the time, at the time you write this this set of instructions, you think, well, I can always remember that. There's no, it's so simple. Would I really need to ever perhaps write down a series of instructions? Um, it all depends. And I'm taking an example that's almost, it's almost certain that people will never need to break down the, the, the that event that that requirement into into steps but if you if you look at it from a point of view of what if at some point in the future either because I've got so many other things on my mind or I've simply forgotten or I am tired or mentally incapacitated in some way or I am in my 70s or 80s and I'm I'm just starting to lose my cognitive ability um you might you might benefit from thinking about things in that way to prepare yourself and save your time and make thing make life easier in the future by virtue of the fact that you could find yourself potentially really struggling with a task that you have known for a very very long time but now you're fine you're having to look it up or learn or ask or pick up the phone or get your one of your children to come round and 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 show you how to make the kettle when you are when you are you know uh, uh so old that those sort of simple tasks uh be become impossible unless you break them down um so I'm just using that as a as a, a very very basic, almost ludicrous, infantile example. So let me let me just step it up a a bit and give you a real life example. And I, I can't show you, I can't show you everything uh, in my in my file of facts here. So I've just decanted one of them, and this is a real world example. And here we go. Here we are. So it says in the top right hand corner, Jacob. Um, and then it says Lumafusion. F T U O. F T U O means for the use of. So uh, this is something to do with editing. Ah, Lumafusion. So that is an editing, a piece of F editing software. And a Jacob is a particular style of cut within your edit whereby the video and the audio don't change to the next scene precisely at the same time. And you can use this to artistic effect, and, and uh, cinematographers use this all the time in videos. Um, and it's uh, the, the opposite to a J-cut is an L-cut. But it is, it is a note for... How to how to use uh, how to implement a J cut within this software in this particular case LumaFusion, and what I do is why am I why am I writing this down? <clears throat> well, if you if you have and I probably have, I'm just guessing sort of three or four thousand of these procedures for various things. It might be video, it might be um, might be a, a particular car repair. Um, I've recently done one uh, where it took me ages, <laughs> it took me ages to learn to discover how to how to weld a uh, how to circumvent a problem with a crankshaft on, on my car uh, through a, a bit of judicious welding that would keep the uh, to keep to keep the uh, timing sprocket um, positioned correctly 
on the, on the crankshafts uh, to to circumvent a design fault on that particular engine, and that took a lot of time. It, it I had to invest maybe an hour of my time to research that. Now, just looking back at this moment, I can't remember precisely what I learned or even where I learned it from. I I I would be able to replicate the the research and find out the procedure but here's the thing if i did that i would have to spend another hour replicating my research to achieve the result or i could just follow one of these which i've written down uh, and i could do it in five minutes and I have written it out literally step by step uh, because I cannot, I don't have the capacity to remember thousands of these routines in my head at any one time. Um, this goes back to not necessarily school days, but 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 certainly college. I, I am not. Um, I am not necessarily the the, the cleverest academic uh, in terms of science. Uh, I'm more into the arts than science. Although for for much of my life I was involved in uh, in science based activities. But the reason why I was able to do that was this thing about routines and doing doing things in this way so that I had a like an aid memoir if I had a particular thing I needed to do that I had I had learnt at college for an exam and then a month later, I, without an AIDS memoir, without a routine written down in my file effects, although some were notebooks, but it's best to, it's best to have a repositionable notebook system like a like a ring binder. Um, I I would I would have had to really really invest, uh, time again learning what I had learned and then unlearned, um. And so I have applied myself in life. I mean, I'm retired now, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but even now, even now, for instance, this is a very recent one, this, this J-cut, L-cut thing. Um, it's something, excuse me, <coughs> it's something that uh, I needed to do uh, with the... Uh, timing sprocket on the crankshaft it's something that i needed to do and i only want to revise this once i only want to not revise this i only want to learn how to do something once and i need a way of remembering it that it goes be way beyond my personal ability to to store these procedures if you like in my mind um and so and this this really really works um and so i guess what i'm what i need to do is explain my definition my definition uh of a routine um it's a it's a series of instructions but crucially it's a series of instructions that can be done step by step and that can be that and then, and this is crucial that can be executed um even if the user has lost some familiarity of the overall procedure
So if you take, there, right there, there we go. So if you take this example where I'm using an editing procedure using software, um, <clears throat> I don't know everything about J cuts or L cuts. I don't know every single way of implementing this, getting this done on this particular software. So I have learned one way of getting it done rather than, in my mind, wasting time learning everything about this procedure and all the possible variations I, I can use and implement in order to achieve the same thing, which is very, very common with, with software, as particularly editing software. There's more, more than one way of getting things done and achieving the same result. So for economies of effort in terms of research, I try and make sure that I can do I can achieve that end um, by at least one method. Uh, and so I'm not an expert at this sort of thing. I'm not an expert car mechanic. I am not an expert electronics engineer. I am not an expert cinematographer. Certainly not that. I'm not an expert at darning my socks uh, or, or cooking. No, cooking, dear, dear. I, I know a few signature dishes, <coughs> but I'm not a chef. But crucially, I can, I can, if I can break things down into a routine, then everything is hunky dory. Um, I. I've been using this system for 50 years, something like that. Um, albeit uh, initially they uh, they were just in an, a school exercise book or a notebook, so I couldn't actually reposition the pages. Had I had was had I been into Filofaxes um, earlier, then that would have saved me a bit of time in when it comes to. Uh, doing an alphabetical search for ease of access, uh, but it, it's no it's no big deal to run through things so long as you've got things in more or less one place. So, for instance, you have if you have an exercise book full of recipes, uh, and you've got maybe thirty recipes in there, it's not absolutely essential to have those repositionable by using a file of X or some other ring binder if you're only searching through 30 recipes. Um, if you have, uh, let's say, 100 different uh, procedures in term with regards to editing, you don't necessarily have to have them in a, in a ring binder. Although I do, because it's something I've, I've only recently started doing uh, because of this whole YouTube thing that I'm uh, that I'm enjoying, uh, so I naturally use a Filofax for editing, and I have all my what, the, what I learn about editing in here, um, and I um, and I'm experimenting all the time. I'm adding to my knowledge, but it's it's almost like I'll tell you what it's like. It's almost like being doing a lecture going for going to going to a research um laboratory or or attending a lecture every day or nipping down the library and making notes but crucially you're making you're trying to to learn things as fast as possible and trying to ensure that you've jot them down in a such a way that you that you you don't have to run the risk of thinking well when i wrote that that's an abbreviation how did i what did i mean i'm damn i'm going to have to look at it again and see see what's what so there is a way of doing this 
there is a way of doing this to increase your resilience, to reduce the risk of, I call it the scratching head moment, where you, you look at your notes and you think, well, what, what did I mean? So how can you how can you combat against that eventuality? Well, I'll give you this example again. So it doesn't really matter what this is, because for some of you, there is no interest here. And I, I, I get it. I totally get that. Um, but um, let me just explain. So when I, in using this routine, um, three taps, and I'm, I'm basically doing this on my mobile phone. So I'm, I've got my mouse connected to my Bluetooth mouse connected to my phone. Um, I love this technology. And I'm tapping, I'm highlighting and then tapping, clicking, clicking the second clip. I've got two clips, two video stroke audio clips side by side. And then I click on the second clip and then I drag a thing called the handle at the beginning of the second clip to the right. But I don't go so far as to encroach onto the speech element. And this, what I mean by the speech element is if you look at the sound wave, the audio sound wave, when you're editing, it's very easy to see when you're talking and when you're not talking, especially if you don't have any background music. And to be honest, I tend not to have any background music on this channel because at the end of the day, um, you're not you're you're not going to. Uh, I'm sh I'm sure most people aren't that fussed as to uh, you know my my choice in mu background music. You want to hear what I'm saying. You may not want to hear what I'm saying. You may think, get to the point, Neil, get to the point. But uh, that's for another day, perhaps. But <clears throat> the reason why I've written it in here in very, very simplistic terms is to minimise the chances of f a failure to understand my notes. So I'm really, really writing it almost in primary school style so to, to avoid that. And then I put a note um, which aids me deciding whether or not this is uh, a an editing method that I might wish to choose. So I'm reinforcing that. I'm saying, hey... Neil, so if you're going to use this, um, just um, just uh, just to let you know what happens when you use this, the speech of the second clip encroaches into the first video. So, and then I put B roll first clip, A roll second clip. And for those of you that don't know what B roll is and A roll is, uh, probably most of you will know A roll is your main your main video where you're perhaps talking, and then your B-roll is your sort of supplementary video uh, where you are showing something. Um, and so I, I will look at that and think, oh, well, that's a very, very handy aid memoir so that I, I know what a typical uh, purpose, what a, a, a use, uh, you know, I can... I can um, I, ca I can remind myself uh, not only how to do it, but when to do it. And then finally, um, is there any other routine that is closely associated with this one that I might want to look up as well? And there is. There's, there's an edit routine called an L cut rather than a J-cut. And then I will look up the L-cut and it will have something very, very similar to this. Uh, but there will be a, another um, use proposition for this. So again, how to do it, when to do it, and some sort of uh, a reference if there's any information, that uh, any section that you might wish to to uh, to look at as well to further your knowledge while you're on this particular subject and so you can apply this 
policy, this this methodology, if you like, to all sorts of things, car repairs, um, cinematography, uh, DIY, um, the uh, let's let's think of a, a really weird one for me, but very re relevant is uh, um, stripping down uh, an Italian threaded bottom bracket on a vintage bicycle frame from the 19, early 1970s. There are certain procedures that are not immediately uh, um, uh, noticeable to, 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 the, to, the, to the naked eye that you must follow. And that these sort of things can easily be forgotten. Or, for instance, how to build a bicycle wheel for a with the right strength and balance both sides of a dished wheel to give the right compliance and strength for different racing conditions okay so i'm not trying to blow my own trumpet with my wheel building but um i've uh, i have raced and and done a lot of cycling some specialist cycling or uh, for for the last 40 years on on wheels that I build myself because they're better than the ones you can buy in the shops for sure uh, and all that knowledge is stuff that you can't uh, certainly for me I cannot store that in my head but I want to be able to retain it and having this a series of routines thousands and thousands of routines written down and stored away means that I can not, I can less substantially reduce the risk of having to do research on things that I've already researched and completed and I know how to do something. I'd never ever want to get to the point where I complete forget it. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a, I'll give you a, uh, a salient um, tale of woe. Um, I uh, years and years ago, when I did my apprenticeship, I did it in uh, in a completely different field. Um, I certainly wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't get into uh, uh, electronics uh, if I had my time again, because I discovered it was the most mind-numbingly boring thing imaginable and once i once i got into it i i i spent a, a fair bit of time getting out of it because i realized it was not it wasn't for me and then i i moved on to uh, uh other things but i remember i remember doing this and i i rem i i i remember obviously passing um passing my exams and then and then uh, an apprenticeship if you will and then uh, um the first year was very very intense at college and then and then we did another 90 uh, sorry 18 months doing a sort of um more workshop based stuff and then more college and more college and I'm not I'm not a great at college. <laughs> um and I I just uh I failed to do this. I failed to do this. What I did was I was just we were in we were in uh lecture lecture halls and we were writing down and writing down and writing down and we never we never had a chance to. I mean, I I know I'm digressing, but uh, but um, you can fast forward <laughs> if uh, I'll I'll add some chapters on this one. Um, but this is a this is a this is a this is something that if I could t advise my younger self, I would I would say this. So day after day after day, uh, we were writing down stuff there was a there was a master in the, the front of the class and he was writing on a traditional blackboard um really really fast 
and it was at such speed with so much information that you you didn't have time to to even consider what you were copying down so i so i asked the guy to stop one day and i said well look you know we're not getting any chance to discuss this with you um you know i'd i'd like to know what i'm what i'm learning you know because all i'm doing is i'm i'm just acting as a secretary i'm just writing down what you're you know and then I don't know what I'm writing down. I'm just copying what you're writing on the notes. So I said, why don't you just print off what you're writing? You can give it to us at the beginning of each lecture and then we can discuss it. Uh, he, he was not amenable to that. So we just carried on aimlessly. And I, I what I, what I realised was... Every time I... Uh, I every time I... Basically, I I was just I was just learning to pass uh, to pass each exam because if you if you failed a single exam, you were out off the course. It was it it was it was tough, you know. And of the twelve of us that started, only eight of us survived until the end of the course. So so it really really was very very cutthroat. Whereas these days, apparently, you know, people people get resets and all sorts um but uh i if i if i had my time i think uh what i would have done was rather than rather than just uh learn how to pass the exam uh i would actually learn the actual well, you know, learn learn stuff for the future. <coughs> because what happened was, somewhat bizarrely, uh, and I might suggest inevitably, I passed the course and I knew absolutely nothing of what I, you know, I nothing had sunk in. So I had no knowledge of the... I had no knowledge whatsoever, or very little, of the... Uh, of of what I was supposed to have learned, and uh, the from the first day of actual employment, where they said, "Congratulations, Neil! Here's your certificate. You are a qualified avionics specialist in that so aircraft electronics." Between you and me, um, and uh, <laughs> I, I, th- I thought, "Hang on a minute! I here I am with this." quite a quite a big responsibility here trying to keep aircraft in the air and i know bugger all excuse my french but i'll say that again because it's it emphasizes my point i knew absolutely bugger all uh, other than a you know fairly rudimentary basic knowledge of what i was doing and from the very first day that i that i i passed and 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 I, you know, I found myself working on engineering teams. I made up my mind. I spent f- from that very day. I I realised that it'd been a massive mistake, and so I, I, I made absolutely sure that I, I kept my head down. Uh, and uh, worked as fast as I could to get the hell out of there and uh, do a job that I wanted to do and that was interesting and I I was able to uh, learn at a pace that enabled me to, crucially, write these routines. And it's something that has instilled that, that experience of learning without actually learning uh, has instilled in me this 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 um, this need, if you like, this personal need to write things in such a way as to as to reduce the risk almost to zero of having to learn things again. Um, and I I think if if I had my time again in my career, well, I was I was only working for for a short while doing this. 
electronics malarkey. Um, but uh, if I had my time again, I would have. I think I would have been more insistent on a, a better um, teaching approach, uh, so that I could have maybe shown uh, shown that the 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 the, um, the profession, the institution, the system that I was involved in. I was only a small cog in a big wheel. Uh, how beneficial this this system of 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 routines was and still is. Um, so it's a quite a long winded thing, and and uh, reveals a little bit of my personal history, uh, perhaps, which is not something that I I'm okay doing it, but I, but you know, I'm not, um, I'm not really someone that likes blowing their own trumpet. But I think it's, I think it's important to use my own personal experience as a, as a good illustration as to why this whole, this whole thing about routines, routines is for me so important. It is the key. It doesn't matter whether you're fixing aircraft or an estate agent or a chef or a carpenter or a car mechanic or a budding youtuber the crucial thing is routines and for me the whole idea of putting these in a file effects and if you have a uh, if you have, well, I'm not using this, but I'll give you, I'm revealing my Filofax Piazza, the, the actual Mark I Piazza, which is this appalling thing that I bought because I couldn't believe just how bad a Filofax was. So, that, you know, this sort of thing interests me. But in here, for instance, if I use this for my routines, I could probably get maybe 200 routines in here. Um, so, you know... Um, if I if I'm um, if I'm thinking about it, I, I couldn't really. It you would quickly get to the point where, if you're doing this with with these routines, um, you're quickly going to run out of space in a single file effects. And if you're running out of space, then probably the sensible thing is to, rather than have dividers, is to ha is to just buy some cheap. I mean, this cost me less than a tenner uh, a few days ago, uh, but you could easily make up your own binders using a bit of cardboard, or just get just get a set a set of ring a, ri a ring mechanism for uh, on Etsy for like two pounds plus postage. Get a whole stack of them, buy thirty ring binder mechanisms, and then just just. Don't even have a binder. Just have these in a box or a shelf, uh, and 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 you have no no binder at all. Or you could make yourself something sort of fairly easily with, well, not too easily, but it's doable with a with a with something like my Frankenfax. It whatever you do. I mean, you could even you could even have some A4 sheets and some treasury tags. If you don't know what a treasury tag is, I'm going to have a video at some point showing you not only what they are, but how useful they are and why they were a favourite with Winston Churchill during the war, no less. Good enough for uh, some Winston Churchill, they're good enough for me. But <coughs> what, I'm, um, what I'm alluding to is this whole thing... <coughs> I do, but I do apologise. Um, it's been a it's been a tough few days, uh, but I, I'm going to leave that in because it hopefully it won't uh, interfere with your enjoyment too much. But um, this whole thing about routines is arguably the most, at least for me, and at least for file effects usage. Because I'm I'm using I'm currently using a, a ring, sorry a, a disc based binder for my diary. It works very very well, um, and I for archived stuff I use 
notebooks, hardbound notebooks. So the thing that I use Filofaxes for the most is this whole thing that I call routines. And I have about 4,000 routines, almost like a searchable, um, old-fashioned um, encyclopedia, if you like, of many things. And each each single page is knowledge that has been written by me and crucially it's been written at the point at which I am most familiar with this routine i.e when I've only just researched it and I've digested and I've thought about it and then I quickly write a routine once I've interpreted what I've learnt bef crucially before I my my recollection of the information deteriorates, which inevitably it will do after a day, a week, a year, simply because it's impossible to remember this along with several thousand other procedures like this. Uh, and so once it's done and dusted, I have the the, the confidence that I can recall these things and it is it is the absolute fundamental key advantage for me as an individual in terms of how do I put this I'm not saying I'm 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 not saying I know more than other people far from it far far from it but comparing comparing this knowledge handling procedure where I create these routines for my own personal use is the difference potentially between knowing how to do something and always knowing how to do it or spending three years of your life learning stuff and then not knowing anything at all or virtually nothing at all because that you you haven't you haven't worked on it as you go in to try and create to create these routines as you go so this has been a very very unusual and very very long-winded um video i'm actually going to uh I'm actually going to put something in at the beginning, a warning that, that this this might drive some viewers to slumber. But if you are still with me, if you are still with me, then then I really appreciate you persevering with me because I've um, I've been wanting to do this for some time. And I I well, several days, actually several days well several weeks and then and then I became ill recently um and this 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 is just a this is just a really really important video for me because um i mean i uh <clears throat> i um it's not like i had a, a, a an attack of anxiety or anything but uh there is a small risk when every video I do, there is a small risk that it will be the last one I do because I could potentially be here one minute and no longer here the next uh, for health reasons. And so I uh, I do think... I, I This is one of the, the videos where it's a, it's a bit unusual what I'm doing um and and how i how i've set this out in my paper based filofax based archive of knowledge over a lifetime or almost a lifetime it is so i regard it as so fundamentally important that i wanted to get this into the ether to share with you guys whether you're watching uh, you, whether you watch uh, today, 
um, as I record this in, uh, in, in November 2023, or whether you are indeed watching this in a hundred years' time. Um, but it is something that I wanted to get out there, because even though I've waffled and rambled, uh, it is... I I I just I just think it's possibly the the one method I use. I mean we can all have a diary, we can all have an address book, we can all do certain things, we can all write to-do lists. But this methodology which I've I I it is open to interpretation and uh you you need to take it with you, you know you need to to stamp your own authority on this and take what you want from it if there is some value in it for you and do it and I wanted to I want to I don't want to be over dramatic but I feel so pleased that I've got this out just in case just in case this might be the last video I make I'm pretty damn sure that I will make my intention is to make hundreds more but you know what just in case this is the last one, I'm so glad I've got this out there because um, I I really really needed to do this. So thank you very much. It's it's coming out for four to six minutes. I thought it would be ten, and it really should be should be five. Um, but I'm I'm hoping that you uh, are bearing with me. Whatever you're doing wherever you are in the world today, tonight, this morning, this afternoon. Uh, I hope you're having a very, very productive day. And I'm so glad to have shared my particular perspective on routines with you. Thank you for watching and goodbye.